In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people. Today is Friday, the 24th of July, 2020. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. The Church celebrates the Feast of St. Shabel Makluf, Priest. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who called the priest St. Shabel Makluf to the solitary combat of the desert and imbued him with all manner of devotion, grant us, we pray, that being made imitators of the Lord's passion, we may merit to be co-heirs of his kingdom, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. The Gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 18 to 23. I read from the first reading. Return, O faithless children, says the Lord. For I am your master. I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And when you have multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, says the Lord, they shall no more see the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It shall not come to mind or be remembered or missed. It shall not be made again. At that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall gather to it, to the presence of the Lord in Jerusalem, and they shall no more stubbornly follow their own evil heart. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to God by transforming your heart. Return to God by transforming your heart. Dearly beloved of God, building from yesterday's readings, today's reading from the prophet Jeremiah is an invitation for us to return to God. Because of the love God has for us, such immense love, 
such immeasurable love. The love that seeks the sinner and the lost sheep. The love that cherishes the human person above his or her mistakes. This is the love that through the prophet Jeremiah, God invites us to return to him. Come back, faithless children. Come back, disloyal children. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. The prophet Jeremiah was addressing himself to disobedient Israel who had fallen away from the ways of the Lord. But God never abandons his own. He invites them to come back to him. His love knows no bounds. Similarly, the prophet Jeremiah addresses himself to us. We have wandered away from God. We have derailed away from his love and we have let other things take our love away from him. We have given his place of priority to other things. Yahweh declares today that we return to him and we return to his love. He alone is our master and he promises he will restore us to the happiness we seek that we have lost. The truth is, when we fall away from God's love, many bad things happen to us. Man is in search of happiness. We are in search of fulfillment. But how often we feel, and we are often deceived by the devil, that that happiness we seek will be found in other things. But when we leave God and go after those things, we just see how more frustrated we become and how more empty we become. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God invites us to return to his love. When Israel fell out from God's love, disaster befell them. For this reason, God promises that he will bring them back and restore them to Zion only if they return to his love. It is the same promise God makes to us. He desires not our destruction, but that we return to him. The prophet says when God restores Jerusalem, she will become the throne of God and all nations will converge on her and she will no longer follow her stubborn and wicked inclinations. Dear God's good people, this return journey to God, this journey back home involves two movements. The first, it is God who is moving towards us, always ready and willing with open hands to welcome and receive us. It echoes his divine mercy, a heart always ready to love, a heart always ready to welcome and to show mercy and love. The second movement involves us. We too have to make that effort to move towards God. Inasmuch as God is moving towards us, he depends also and needs our human free will to move towards him because he will not force us. He will not compel us. He leaves us free. The choice is ours to make. So that is what it means. He moves to us, but he also expects us to move towards him. But how willing are we, beloved, to return to God? That is the question. God is always willing. His arms are always open. But are we willing to return to God? Today's passage echoes two great other passages in the Bible. The first is the parable of the prodigal son. We find the father who is willing to forgive his son and the son who made the effort to move towards his father. He said, I will arise from where I am and go back to my father. That is the movement, beloved. The father always willing and the son who made the effort to rise from where he was and to return home to his father. Also, we picture this in the words of the prophet Hosea, chapter 1 to chapter 3. Hosea is ready to return to his adulterous wife. He is ready to return to his unfaithful wife. Despite her unfaithfulness, he is always ready to go back to that love he had for her. This is who God is for us, beloved. He doesn't keep any score of wrong. He doesn't look at our unfaithfulness. He is always ready, as it were, to begin all over again. 
to go back to return to the love that he has for us. But what blocks us is we on our part deny to take our own journey towards God. What are some of those things that prevent us from taking that journey towards God? The first is fear. Many times we are afraid. We feel because of the things we have done, God will send us away. We feel perhaps because of the sins we have committed, God will scare us away. But that is not who God is. He is a loving Father. He is a merciful Father. So dear friends, let your sins not scare you. Do not be afraid to return to God. He is there waiting for you with open arms. The second is doubt. We doubt. Many times we give in to doubt if God will truly forgive us. We doubt if God truly loves us. And because of this doubt, many have given in to the third thing, which is despair, loss of hope. And many have died in their sins because they doubted God's love for them. They feared and they gave in to despair. God tells us today, He is ready. He is always willing to welcome us. Despite our unfaithfulness, like the adulterous wife, He is ready to love us again. Like the faithful, like the unfaithful children, He is ready to bring us back to His love. Despite how disloyal we have been, God is ready to welcome us home. Therefore, dear friends, let us return to God. And one way to return to Him is to transform our hearts. We cannot return to God if our hearts are not transformed. Today's gospel passage is the explanation of the parable of the sower. The most important aspect, beloved, is the heart. Let our hearts be transformed. And when our hearts are transformed, then we shall also undertake that journey back home, that journey towards God. Finally, we are also invited to give others the opportunity just as God gives us the opportunity every time. Many times, unlike God, we get so disappointed with others, perhaps because we have given them a first try and a second try. God invites us today, give them a second chance, give them a third chance, give them a fourth chance, and even give them the fifth chance, beloved. Let us always be ready to give others the opportunity as much as God gives us the opportunity always to return to Him. Dear God, we thank you for the love that you have for us. Despite our disloyalty, despite our unfaithfulness, you are always faithful. You are always loyal. Help us to return to you with all our heart. St. Joseph Makluf was born in the year 1828 in Lebanon. At the age of 23, Shabel, that is the name he chose when entering the novitiate, left his family to enter the Lebanese Maronite monastery called Notre Dame de Mifouk and was ordained in the year 1859. He spent several years in the community of Anaya and then about 23 years in complete solitude at St. Peter and Paul Hermitage where he died on Christmas Eve in the year 1898. Shabel had a reputation for his austerity, penances, obedience and chastity. He also had great devotion to the most blessed sacrament. Through his intercession, may we make that journey back home to God with our willing hearts and with our loyal hearts. And God, who never cast away any of his children, is always ready to welcome us home. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.